Hello and welcome to Your City, Your News, where we inform you about issues and topics happening in the city of El Segundo. I'm Molly Perlman. El Segundo Police is warning the community about a virus recently detected in local raccoons and what this could mean for your pets. So far, nine raccoons have been caught by El Segundo Animal Control. Two have been diagnosed with a distemper virus, while the remaining seven have shown symptoms. While the virus cannot be transmitted to humans, unvaccinated dogs and cats are at risk of catching the disease if they come into contact with an infected raccoon. Once transmitted, there are certain symptoms that an animal will exhibit. Sneezing, nasal discharge, uh, difficulty breathing, things like that. Uh, the next stage or progression would be GI or gastrointestinal. Uh, we can see things like lack of appetite and even diarrhea. Once it reaches the central nervous system, the final stage of the virus, animals may have trouble walking, looking off balance, and it's at that point that the disease may resemble rabies and becomes a concern due to misdiagnoses and pets potentially being euthanized. In order to protect your pets, Dr. Stryber says vaccines are key and to follow these steps. If you have a cat that's an indoor-outdoor cat, don't let it go outside, don't feed it outside, don't put its food outside. Uh, same thing as with dogs. So far, no pets in El Segundo have been diagnosed with the distemper virus since the outbreak, but the El Segundo Animal Hospital is receiving a higher volume of calls regarding vaccinations. For more information, pet owners can call the El Segundo Animal Hospital at 310-606-8811, or if you observe a raccoon exhibiting symptoms of distemper, call the El Segundo Police Department at 310-524-2760. The El Segundo Police Department has seen an increase in thefts from purses that are left unattended in shopping carts. Only a few seconds is all a thief needs to remove a wallet from an open purse, Often the suspect is working with other individuals that will distract the purse owner or act as a lookout. Typically, right after the theft, the thieves will take the stolen wallet to local stores to purchase thousands of dollars worth of gift cards using the victim's credit slash debit cards. If you are shopping and your wallet is stolen, immediately call the police from the store. If reported quickly, officers can view store surveillance and be able to provide local agencies with suspect descriptions that could lead to an arrest. A group of El Segundo High School students recently competed as finalists in a coding competition for the International Space Station. The Space Eagles have been preparing and coding since September, and after making it to the top 14 out of approximately 150 teams, their program was put to the test in the Zero Robotics International Competition organized by NASA and MIT. This competition is called Coronaspheres, and basically we program satellites in the International Space Station to take pictures of points of interest on an asteroid. There are various challenges added through the way, like um, solar flares, which cause us to lose data and lose control, and weird things like that that we have to take into account. But it's all programming and it's all simulated. The El Segundo team collaborated with students from Maryland and Italy and achieved the fourth highest score in the finals, which consisted of programming actual robotic satellites on the International Space Station. You know, they have a spinning asteroid that they have to track these things that are moving, and then they have to worry about colliding with their opponents. They're trying to avoid the, uh, the sun uh, solar flares. Um, all this stuff is, even MIT said, is tough. El Segundo is the only high school from Southern California that made the top 14 ISS finalist team alliances this year. The Space Eagles are planning on finishing even stronger next year, noting that their team members will be juniors and seniors, taking advanced calculus and AP computer science courses. Every two seconds, someone in the U.S. needs blood. Renee Stevens takes us to Fire Station 1, where El Segundo's finest battled it out to help make a difference. We're here at the El Segundo Fire Department for the ninth annual Battle of the Badges for a very worthy cause. It's supposed to be a competition between our police and fire departments. However, we encourage everyone from the community to come down uh, and give blood. More than 41,000 blood donations are needed in the U.S. every day. Ashley Kendrick from the Red Cross says donating just a pint of blood can really make a difference. You can save three, up to three lives and you never know when you're going to need it, so it's always good to give back. 
Donators must be 17 years old, weighing at least 110 pounds, and in good health. Kendrick offers some good advice before planning to donate. Hydrate days before. Also eat iron and rich foods, which is fresh spinach, beans, red meat, vegetables, fruits, things like that. Even though it's a competition, getting as many donations as possible is the ultimate goal. To some, like firefighter Ivan Stevenson, this cause is close to his heart. My mother was a recipient of receiving blood. She passed away from lupus, but she received many, vials, uh, many donations of blood throughout the years. Donators will receive a t-shirt to wear in pride in their effort to help save lives. For El Segundo TV, this is Renee Stevens. This year's Battle of the Badges collected 23 pints of blood, enough to save 69 lives. Friends and family recently gathered at the El Segundo Museum of Art to explore their new exhibit. During the museum's Experience 13 entitled Home, attendees took part in family-friendly tours with ESMOA educators and created artwork inspired by the theme. Family Day is um, a free event that happens monthly here at ESMOA and it's a wonderful time for friends and family to come out, look at art, talk about art, and make art together. This, this is an activity led by an artist, so this is coming from someone's passion and from their skills and it just gives them a real feeling that what they're doing is really quite special. And that's exactly what, what we hope that uh, ESMOA would be like be, to become the living room of El Segundo with artwork on Main Street. We are actually joined by um, one of our artists who's currently featured in our experience home. She is here facilitating a bookmaking workshop and it's always exciting to be working with a living artist. Family day and all art making materials were free. Keep an eye out for their next experience entitled Spark, which will have a combined community opening and family day on February 22nd. May is Older Americans Month and the time to appreciate the older adults in our community at Elderfest. This year also marks the 50th anniversary of the Older Americans Act. In honor of this milestone, Recreation and Parks will focus on how older adults can take charge of their health, getting engaged in the community, and making a positive impact in the lives of others. To nominate someone, fill out the short application with a brief statement regarding the person and turn it in to the Jocelyn Center by March 11th. For more information, call 310-524-2701. The El Segundo Chamber of Commerce has moved web locations from .org to .com. Their new webpage has the latest on events, photos of past events, and much more. To view the page, visit elsegundochamber.com. Well, that's all for today. Remember that you can also keep up with us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter by searching El Segundo TV. Thanks for watching Your City, Your News. I'm Molly Perlman. We'll see you next time.